Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel, Lockdown Literary Club. I am Sanjana. I put on lipstick to match. Fable today. <laughs> Just so we're clear, I haven't read all the books on my shelves, guys. I think read about 50% of all the books I own. Um, so I have a good 200 to 300 books that I haven't read yet that I already own. But what do I do? I buy new books every month because it's a hobby I can't seem to quit. <laughs> In the last couple of months, I got a bunch of new releases, the books that came out this year. I guess I'm spending way too much time on Goodreads and Bookstagram and Booktube. So I made my TBR list for July and August a couple of weeks ago. And yesterday I was like perusing YouTube and I found Jack Edwards, who's a really, really famous Booktuber. He had a Summer Reads video up and I was just like, okay, I'll check it out. And most of the books he has on that list, I have on my, on my list. About six to 10 books on his list that I already read and the rest I own now because I want to read them. I'm just like, wow. Um, this is what happens when you read popular books. Everyone ends up reading the same stuff. <laughs> it's kind of a problem. But I'm still going to read them only because they sound amazing and last year I felt bad because I didn't read most of the popular books until maybe December and some of them I haven't even gotten to yet. I felt left out when everyone was talking about the Pulitzer Prize winners or the Booker Prize winners or the Goodreads winners and I was just like, I don't know these books, why don't I know them? So I'm not going to feel left out this year, I'm going to read everything that comes out. And then after I'm done with the July, August reads, I'm going to try and find some unconventional books to read because I don't want to be a basic bitch. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I liked it when I wasn't heavily influenced by what everyone else was reading. So I want to go to a bookstore, not look up the rating on Goodreads or find out what other people are saying and just pick up books that speak to me. That'd be nice. <laughs> I have 15, 16 books that I want to read in July. I keep setting unreasonable goals for myself and then feeling really, really bad about it when I don't meet my goals. It's a very, very vicious cycle that I've found myself in. I've tried to like pare this down as much as possible and I still ended up with 15. So I, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever learn. I have no idea. Um, so the first book I want to read, which I was supposed to finish in June, but I had other stuff going on. So I will read it in July. The book is The Transition Baby by Tori Peters. The, the blurb behind this book just sounds so interesting that I really, really want to dig into it. First of all, I can't wrap my head around like what's quite happening. There's three people. I don't think all three of them are transgender. So there's one person who's currently transgender. There's one person who at one point transitioned into a woman and now is detransitioned back into a man and his girlfriend, whose gender is not specified here, could be transgender, could not be, I have no idea. So there's three people, one of them is pregnant and they might be raising a baby together. I don't understand the logistics of it and it just sounds so cool and interesting. This is a very modern family and yeah, this is, these are the kind of stories I want guys. The next book I've been meaning to read for a while is The Poppy War by R.F. Huang? Yes. I've been reading a lot of fantasy and been looking up like all the popular fantasy series out there and this has been coming up a lot. Part of the reason I'm really looking forward to reading this book is because most fantasy books are very Eurocentric. Even though they're supposed to be set in a time period or a place or a universe that doesn't e exist, usually they're very inspired by human history, what has already transpired here. Uh, this one is inspired by China and it's been a while since I've read something is inspired by Asia. I'm not counting uh, Lee Bordugo's Grisha Wars because Russia is more European than Asia. Culturally, a lot more European. Um, the last book I read, which was more Asian inspired, is one of my favorite books growing up. It was called A Book of a Thousand Days by Shannon Hale. And that also had a lot of Asian history and language woven into it. I think this parallels Chinese history, the, the poppy war. I'm, I'm guessing that's talking about the poppy trade where poppy is like the flowers that were used for opium and the British and the Chinese engaged in opium trade, which eventually led to a lot of, lot of Chinese people being addicted to opium, which is how the British controlled them, which is part of the reason China shut down trade for a while back when this happened. Wow, this is all from my like college Chinese history 101. Imperialists and colonialists introducing disease and drugs to indigenous cultures and then manipulating them is part of human history, guys. It's just everywhere you look. 
who knows where we would be right now if, if Britain didn't pimp out drugs uh, to China back then. This is one of the most popular fantasy series out there. Hopefully it's really good. Next, let me tell you what I mean by Joan Didion. Uh, this is nonfiction. Joan Didion's books are usually a form of essays. All the essays in here, I don't think they've been written recently. I think these, these are from earlier in her career. They're getting published now. It's a little concerning that these essays didn't make it into her previous books and it's just like leftover material being packaged and sold into a book but I really like the way she writes so I don't mind. I will take how much ever Joan Didion I can get so yes. Okay next Billion Dollar Loser by Reeves Whiteman. This book is also non-fiction. It's about the rise and fall of the WeWork company. I think it's mostly focused on the five weeks prior to when the IPO for WeWork happened and then everything fell apart. It sounds a lot like Bad Blood which was yeah. It sounds a lot like Bad Blood, which is about how Theranos fell apart. Both both companies raised a lot of money and they were really cool for a while and then things fell apart. So I've been really intrigued by how big companies function, uh, the decision making, the egos of all the founders, the managers, CEOs. I've read a few in this genre. Maybe I'll do an entire video just talking about people that make terrible decisions in business and why we keep trusting them. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is being made into a movie. I forgot who stars in it, but it probably won't come out until the end of the year or next year. So we have some time. If you want to read it, you have some time. But Next book I have is Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass. This is by Lana Del Rey, the singer-songwriter. It's a book of poetry. I actually wanted to read this a few months ago and then I realized I don't think I fully understand poetry. I was feeling very conscious about myself because I'm like, poetry is not one of my strong suits. I pretty much faked it in high school uh, when I had language classes. I pretended like I understood what the poets were talking about. I really didn't get it. Uh, so I took a couple of poetry classes online. I have a much stronger understanding of poetry, how to analyze it. It's almost like song lyrics, how poetry works, but there's a lot more to work with. There's rules that you can break. Like I'm really digging poetry at the moment, so I want to get into this. I heard she's really, really good. Maybe that's just compared to other singers and celebrities that have written poetry or maybe she's just a good poet regardless of who you compare her to but oh next book I have is Where the Crawdads Sing by Dahlia Owens oh my god this book I've had it on my TBR for a year or two now every month I kept bumping it for something else and it's finally time that I read it in fact I think this is gonna be the pick for my book club I'm starting a book club I think first month I'm gonna pick the book because it's new and ah, I make the rules so first month I'm going I'm probably gonna pick this it's probably very generic and basic for me to pick this book I'm already in two minds about this I'm like I want to know everyone's gonna judge me for picking this book but my reasoning uh, which I'm going to explain to my fellow book club members is that we're just starting out it's very important I pick a book that is uh, popular and will be comfortable for everyone until we figure out as a club what our niche is hmm? Hmm. okay that's not the point of this video i got distracted because i'm a little insecure about my pick <laughs> this book sounds like it's a thriller there's a murder and uh, maybe it's a whodunit maybe it's a thriller but also there's something called a marsh girl what is a marsh girl how do you live in a marsh i don't understand that yeah it, this book sounds weird in the best kind of way and it's giving me a little bit of To Kill a Mockingbird vibe. I don't know if that's true but when I read the blurb for the book I was like wait this sounds like To Kill a Mockingbird if Boo Radley was the main protagonist if the story was from his perspective. Both the Marsh Girl and Boo Radley are kind of outside of society. They're shunned by their town or their considered weird they're suspected of doing terrible things but that's probably not true i'm just guessing she didn't murder the person and i, I think we'll take away lessons about humanity and society by the end of the book a lot of people have told me how amazing this book is i'm sure i will like it and i'm sure you'll be like i told you you should have read this sooner i know i should have read this sooner i just had other things on my list guys i'm sorry it happens in my defense i've told a lot of people to read a lot of books right away and they haven't so don't point fingers okay huh 
this. I'm going to get into some of the books I don't own copies of because they're expensive in India and I'm not made of money. Okay. Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Yes. This is a novella. It's about two black immigrants living in UK. They're both artists. One's a dancer, one's a photographer. They meet at a bar and they fall in love. And it's just talking about the political climate, the immigrant experience. And the thing that really hooked me is that it's about black artistry, which is not something you hear a lot about. This book sounds nice. It sounds like my happy place. I like politics, I like art, and I like getting my stories from voices we don't hear from often. So this sounds like it's the perfect package of everything I want to read. So a book that has come out this year and it's pretty popular is My Year Abroad by Chang Ri Lee. This is my alternate pick for the book club. The only reason I'm apprehensive to suggest this is because it is, I think, still expensive to buy this in India. And that seems rude to make people buy a book that even I haven't bought yet because money. This book sounds like a road trip book set in East Asia, but also like they're exploring a lot of food. I don't know, like there seems to be some trauma involved and food involved and very unexpected things keep happening. I can't get a lot from the reviews for this book or the blurb. I think that the reason is because people saying anything about this book will give away the twists and turns. It feels very hush-hush what's going to happen in this book, and that's good. One thing I've heard about this book is that there's a lot of description about different kinds of food. The, both the protagonists are constantly eating. I'm probably going to be very hungry as I read this book. And maybe I will cook some of the dishes mentioned in this book just to go around with the reading experience. I love Asian food, and I like books. Together, perfection. Okay, the next book I have is The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Donny Walton. Uh, this book is about a band of two people, Opal and Nev, who broke up like a few decades ago uh, and they both pursued individual careers. Nev went mainstream whereas Opal was very into Afropunk and was really renowned in her own circles. And they're going to get back together for one final revival tour. And there's also a journalist that's interviewing Opal about why they broke up. There seems to be some crime story involved in the breakup of the band. There's a documentary probably being made or a journalist is doing a piece about the revival tour or like what happened to cause the fractures that eventually led to the band's breakup. It sounds like a lot of drama and really, really fun drama. This sounds like the kind of book that's going to get made into a movie. It just sounds exactly like what Hollywood likes to cash in on. And I don't mind. I really like these kind of stories. So <laughs> make a movie. I will read the book and I'll watch it. And I'll talk about how the movie is not as good as the book because that's what we do. We are Killjoys. Is. Okay, now back to some of the books I actually have physical copies of. Uh, Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. Euler. Before I bought this book, I had no idea what it's about. I know it's really, really popular right now. It was all over social media and I'm like, I'm buying it. And then I was like thinking about the title. I'm like, is it about fake profiles that you create on social media? Or is it about fake stories that you tell in your narrative? And then I read the back and it seems like it's about both of these things, which means this is a double entendre. And I like that in a book. I like a title that's complex, which is what English teachers are always talking about. They're always talking about why a book or a poem is titled something and they really want to break it down. And I like that, that like English school teacher energy of this title. So um, this sounds fun. This sounds really, really cool. Um, scary because it's happening right now where we have alternative facts and conspiracy theorists everywhere, left and right. This is probably going to be very chilling and hard to digest, but also a much needed analysis of the times we're living in. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, I'm just very happy with this title. Good job. Well done, Lauren. Well done. The next book I've been meaning to read is uh, Aftershocks by Nadia Owusu. This is autobiographical. Nadia experienced when she was young, the unconventional childhood in the sense, uh, I think her mother was never really around. Uh, she's mixed race. She grew up in a bunch of different countries. So I think it's a book about like finding your identity. There's also a, apparently an extended metaphor about earthquakes, tremors and aftershocks, as the title suggests, um, which is woven into the telling of her story. And <laughs> I'm a nerd. I, I like extended metaphors. I like it when the whole book is an extended metaphor for something. That's just the nerd in me appreciates that sort of stuff. So yay, yay. 
I like stories about people with like confused or multinational identity where they don't quite know where they belong. Something I really connect with, I haven't been raised in a lot of countries, but I did grow up away from home, so it's something I relate to. Yeah, that's why I'm gonna read this book. That and the extended metaphor. Okay, next book I have is The Ninth House by Dee Bardugo. The only reason I want to read this book right away is because every time someone brings up this book and they're like, oh, you've read it. And I'm just like, I haven't, not yet. I haven't yet. <laughs> and I feel really guilty because I, I talk about the author a lot and I, I feel like I'm going to be kicked out of her fandom just because I haven't read this book. <sighs> the heights of my FOMO, guys. <clears throat> Anyways, so this is the only popular book by her I haven't read yet. I know she's written some other stuff like Wonder Woman comic. I'm not rushing to read that. Maybe someday, you know. But this one I want to read. It's a fantasy book. It's not set in Grisha Wars. I think this is the first book in a series. So it's rumored that Lee Berdugo might be dropping a book later this year. Maybe early next year. Nothing has been officially announced yet. Um, so it'll either be the sequel to this book or uh, the third book in the Six of Crows trilogy. I didn't know it was a trilogy. I found out fairly recently and I was shocked. Either way, if it's going to be the second book in the series, I do not want to be left out. So I'm just going to read this now so my anxiety can be quenched. Oh okay, yeah, um, the last two I have, Under the White Sky by Elizabeth Colbert. Elizabeth Colbert is an environmentalist. She mostly writes about the environment, climate change, our world ending. <laughs> uh, this book is a follow-up to The Sixth Extinction which is a great book. It's about the mass extinction, the sixth extinction that, that's happening, that we're currently living through, mostly caused by <coughs> humans. Elizabeth Colbert is a journalist first, so a part of her way of doing research is going to like different continents, science labs and research centers and collecting information and then just tying it all together. That's how she writes. In this book, the common thread she finds is that everywhere that we're battling climate change, our response to it seems to be technology and how that's kind of a paradox. I don't know if she draws the conclusion that it's good or bad. Who knows? Probably bad. Mm. I am curious because this topic is relevant. It, our survival probably depends on it. <laughs> uh, the last book on my TBR is The Bitcoin Standard by Saif Deen Amos. Too lazy to Google this right now. Uh, this was actually recommended to me by a friend. Way back in March, I thought I'd do a month where I just read books about finance and stocks and markets and all of that. And that hasn't happened. <laughs> so maybe in the future I'll do that, a month of just reading those books. For right now, I want to read Bitcoin Standard because even though I'm an economics student, I do not understand the Bitcoin at all. I've read about it, it just goes over my head. I don't completely understand it. So this is about the history of Bitcoin and its relevance and how it works and all of that. So it would be nice to educate myself because I don't know and I don't like not knowing. So hopefully this gives, helps me understand digital currency because I mean, I'm a millennial. I should be on board, right? And if you're someone who doesn't know anything about Bitcoin, ask me in a month and I will give you a lecture. <laughs> no, I won't. Um, I'm, I'm really the person <laughs> that always goes to my friends. Actually, this is how it works. Uh, I should do that less. I'm, it's probably really annoying that I'm constantly like going off in tangents explaining how things work. So, Sorry. I think that's it. I think those are the 15 books that I want to read this month. Probably not going to get through all of them. Probably going to feel terrible about it. I have about 20, 25 books on my TBR for August and that's not going to happen either. So this is going to get piled on that and that's going to get piled on the rest of the year and then I will probably have a mental breakdown sometime in September or October. <sighs> hmm. Let me know if you guys want to read any of these books with me. I really enjoy reading books with other people. Like, I love escaping into books, but it's kind of more fun when you do it with other people. So, oh, let me know if you want to read any of these books with me. I'm actually trying to build a bigger book community, so do share this video if you think someone would be interested, because I would like to have more discussions about books, not just books I'm reading this month, but books in general. So if you know someone who will be interested, do share it with them. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>